so today we've got the S2000 power station from All Powers. All right, so let's take a look at these specs real quick. So it says our battery is lithium ion. I believe that is actually NMC chemistry. It's not lithium iron phosphate, uh, from what I understand with this power station. The capacity is 1500 watt hours. The AC charging capabilities is 400 watts. The solar charging capability is 500 watts. The AC output is 2000 watts with a 4000 watt surge. Okay, let's open it up. Okay, so our warranty and user's manual. Here's our accessory bag. We've got our AC power charging cord. We've got a car charging cord. And we've got our solar cable. So this is MC4 to XT60. Okay, I think this is a, a cover. So you can cover it up. Right, so let's pull this guy out. All right, and then there's the unit. Interestingly, it looks like it came with a DC output already on. <laughs> Maybe it got uh, bounced around in the box. Uh, it's a very attractive looking unit, a very simplistic design. These handles up here, those felt good. They feel good in the hand. They're nice size, actually. They're not, don't feel like it's going to hurt your hand if you're lugging this thing around. Uh, but the quality, it feels really, really high quality. It doesn't feel cheap at all okay so on the front here we've got four ac output receptacles and on the, the dc section we've got a 12 volt cigarette lighter style jack we got two usb type c and we got four standard size usb ports we've got a display we i think this is the bluetooth button so you you hold this down to enable bluetooth uh, we've got the AC button, and you have to hold it until it comes on, which is uh, very good because you don't want that coming on by just bumping it because that will drain your battery down. And then, okay, so that would be the solar input and the car charging input, XT60. Fan on this side. Here's our AC charging input. Looks like we'll get a fan on this side as well. Uh, just some information about the unit on the bottom. That's pretty much it. You know, if you're packing this up for camping or something like that, I think having a flat surface like this, a rugged surface, it just makes it easier to pack in. Also, you see how these right here extend out. So that will shield this section right here from getting damaged or buttons being pushed when you're packing it in. All right, well, let's plug something into the AC side. How about an air conditioner? And we've got the AC on high. All right, and it shows that we're drawing 528 watts. And let's hook up the oscilloscope so we can check the sine wave. And there you go, we got a perfect pure sine wave. I don't see any issues with that at all. All right, and so while we're drawing power from this unit, let's plug it up to the AC power source and see if we can charge and run an AC device off the unit simultaneously. I really appreciate you guys commenting and letting me know things that I miss or things that you want to see because I do want to know these things so that I can produce a, you know, a better review for you guys. So I've got the AC power cord hooked up. I'm not sure how to tell. Is it this? Does that mean it's charging? Here, let's unhook it and see. Oh, I think it does mean it's charging. Yeah, because we stop. This little battery th thing stops moving. And then it starts back up when I plug it back in. It's not exactly telling us how much watts are going in. Let's turn the air conditioner off. I'm curious if... Maybe this doesn't tell us. Oh, wait, no. It's actually telling us now. Uh, so it's, it's saying 339 watts in. Let's try this again. Is it going to switch between them? Because that would be interesting. Okay, when I turn the air conditioner back on, it switched to displaying the output value. 
All right, so let's try the app and see if this gives us more information. And I think we've got to hold this button down and that enables the Bluetooth. Oh, and there it is right there. Ah, there we go, and we're connected. All right, so it does show us the input wattage and the output wattage. We're actually still plugged into the AC charging, although we are 100% right now. And we have the air conditioner plugged in. So let's turn on the air conditioner. Here it is, look. It is actually showing us the output wattage and the input wattage. The input is showing zero at the moment, but I did see it. There it is, showing 57, 60. And then really the only other thing that we can do here is looks like we can we can enable or disable the DC output. Uh, same thing with the AC output. We can change between 50 and 60 hertz. It tells us our state of charge and our remaining time and whatnot. All right, guys, it's that time. We're going to try to charge with solar. And I've got two 380 watt panels out here. I just want to make sure that we're going to get enough solar to hit that 500 watt mark and this should definitely do it and these are in these are in parallel and so our open circuit voltage should be around 40 44 volts something like that and according to the manual or the website I don't remember which one I saw it in but this will accept uh, up to 70 volts all right let's go ahead and plug in the connector and it's great that these guys actually include this MC4 to XT60 connector. A lot of them do not provide this. All right. Look at there, so it starts charging right away. We didn't have to, ooh. And we're already at 517 watts. That was fast. That got up to 518, 517 watts, like within seconds. Yeah, from my experience, the all powers power stations uh, work really good with solar. You know, even their R600, the small model, it accepts 300 watts of solar, and it works quite well. All right, guys, I'm just going to let that run for a bit to see if it's all good and nothing weird happens. We'll be back. All right, guys, so this has been charging from solar for quite some time, and uh, we're still pulling in 530 watts. That's the most I've seen so far, I think. Maybe might have seen just slightly over that. And this thing is saying we're at 100%. So I'm not sure why we're still pulling in uh, 530 watts if we're at 100%. But uh, yeah, I mean, this thing is like a solar charging beast. Really impressed with the solar capabilities on this guy. Uh, I guess I'm just going to go ahead and let it continue. Look, it says 531 right there. Yeah, I guess I'm just going to continue letting this charge until it stops even though it says a hundred percent all right well i'll be back uh when this thing stops charging i guess okay yeah so we can see that the power is starting to wind down a little bit uh so yeah it, it's got to be really close to fully charging and we've got plenty of sun out there so those panels are still getting nice and saturated yeah so this this will slowly start to wind down until it's basically close to zero and then it'll, it'll it'll then be fully charged all right and there it is we are pulling no more power from the solar panels we are 100 percent fully charged all right guys so now we're going to do a discharge test we're going to discharge through the cigarette lighter port and uh, see how much capacity we pull i expect to, it to be a little loss going through this because i'm sure there's some kind of converter behind this so there should probably be maybe a five percent or so loss we'll try it anyway and see what we get okay and we're showing 13 volts and i've got this set to discharge at 10 amps maybe we should just do nine amps let's start it off at nine amps there we go i'm doing 108 watts so that's probably going to take quite a bit of time maybe like 15 hours We'll just let that run and come back. All right, so the capacity test has completed and we have arrived at 1,427 watt hours out of 1,500. And that's a very respectable number because 
uh, we're not able to test the battery capacity directly at the battery we have to go through this the cigarette lighter jack it's going to have some conversion circuitry behind it that's going to be wasting some power so for us to get this capacity right here that's actually pretty good because we have to account for some losses in the conversion of power here all right so moving on i was going to move on to loading the the inverter down to see if we can get to that 2000 watt limit but as we were in the middle of doing this review, this showed up. And I had no clue that they were actually sending this. This came as a separate package. I think you can buy this as a kit to where it comes with the power station and a foldable solar panel. I think it's a 200 watt. So let's go ahead and open it up and we'll test that along with the power station. And there it is, all folded up. Nice little green trim there. On the back side, it looks like we have storage. So let's see what we've got in there. All right, so we've got an MC4 to a clip style connector. I guess if you wanted to connect this directly to a battery, we've got MC4 to Anderson. So if you have a solar power station that has that requires an Anderson plug, got you covered there. And we've got an MC4 to a barrel jack, and it looks like we've got different different kinds of barrel jack adapters here. And then we just have your standard MC4 connectors from the solar panel. Okay, that's actually rather large. Let's put this outside and see how much power we can generate. All right, I just have it laying flat out there. Let's plug it into the power station and see what we get with it just laying flat. Okay, so we're seeing about 120 watts just laying flat. That's not bad at all. It's, it's not even close to being optimal laying flat like that. Let me go ahead and prop it up and get it angled more towards the sun and we'll see what it gets. Okay, so now we're getting 132 watts uh, with it propped up. I think we're still not at an optimal angle. So let's try to adjust this a little bit. Yeah, so the legs don't allow for enough adjustability because I need to lay it down flatter and that's the best I can get with those legs. They don't really offer enough adjustability to move it from that angle. So to get a better angle on the sun, I'm going to have to lay it down and just prop it up with something else. So you can see in that config, in this current config, it's 126, 127 watts. Well, it looks like that's about the best I can get out of it. I think 130 was the best I could do. Um, I've got it pretty much propped up to the best angle I can. If you look at this guy here, we pretty much just have a slight little shadow there, but it's pretty much lined up to the sun. All right, so let's move on to maxing out the inverter output all right let's plug in the heater oh we have to turn the ac output on okay we're pulling 634 let's plug in the heat gun okay so we're at 1080 let's turn the heater on medium okay so now we're at 1640 all right, let's get real crazy and plug in the AC. We'll just turn this on low. And there's not a whole lot of charge in our power station. Oh, we pushed it over the edge. All right, so maybe we can't start the AC up with all this other load running. So let's turn the, let's unplug the heater. Yeah, I, okay, so I think what it is is our battery is actually just too low. So this thing's going to have to charge up. So I've got a solar panel on my Xterra. 385 watt, I don't know if you can see that. I figure let's try it out and plug it into this power station. I just ran the cables uh, through the window for right now. But let's see what we're getting. All right, 287 watts. I'm just gonna let this thing charge up in here. All right guys, so I was out driving around 
and I kept looking back here to see how much wattage we were getting and uh, it was doing quite well uh, I saw almost 300 watts at one point and then I pulled up to the pool store because I needed to get some shock for my pool and I went in and I come out and I take a glance at it and it's stuck at this four watts and it's just been that way and we got plenty of sun the panel up on the roof is in full sun I don't know what's going on it's just like stuck in four watt mode and it's doing nothing beyond that so is this some quirk let's unplug the solar look at that it's still saying oh okay now it went off not saying zero right now let's try plugging the solar back in look at that and now we're back up to 280 some odd watts it like glitched out for some reason and it just got stuck on four watts so the question is is it going to do that frequently because that would not be good if you're trying to get this thing to charge via solar and then it just glitches out you know in the middle of the day or something like that and you don't actually get charged all right well i'm gonna let it keep going and i'll keep an eye on it and see if it if it does that glitch again all right guys so it just did that glitch that one time and that was it and it's later in the day so we're only getting uh you know 17 to 20 watts because you know my panel is almost well it's pretty shaded and we're at 83 percent so it's been charging for about let's say five hours uh and it, like i said it just glitched that one time i don't know what that was all about but we definitely did have to disconnect the solar and reconnect it to get it to start working again all right so now that we got it mostly charged up let's try to run some heavy loads let's turn on the ac output let's hook up the air conditioner We'll turn that on. Start with low. All right, so we're doing 384 watts with just the AC. Let's hook up this heater. All right, look at that. We've got 1,590, oh, almost 1,600 watts now. All right, let's try the heat gun and see where that puts us. Oh, we're over 2,000 watts now. So we're at 2,032. 2050 so it seems to be holding its its own quite well oh did it turn off no it's still going uh, so yeah we're definitely overdoing it and it is handling it fine let me go down a little bit super hard to get exactly 2000 watts 1700 1772 yeah it seems to be handling it perfectly fine guys and the fans on this thing are not super loud or anything. Yeah, the fans are perfectly fine. 1944, 1950. Let's see if we can go down a little bit on this AC. Yeah, it's working with those heavy loads. Like we've got a heat gun, we've got a heater, and we've got an AC running. And we're over the 2,000 watt limit, and it's taking it like a champ. All right, guys, so I think that's going to be the end of the video. I think I've covered everything on this guy. Uh, as always, please give me your comments of what you think about this, and I'll catch you on the next one.